Hey guys, Heroic Flamingo here, and this is my video explaining why you should play Guild Wars 2 in 2021. This video is good for new and returning players, so whichever one you are, hopefully this will be helpful for you. As always, timestamps are below, so if you want to skip forward to a particular topic, then you can. And if you want to be kept up to date with all of my content, like, subscribe, and follow me on Twitter, at Heroic Flamingo. One of the great things about Guild Wars 2 is the large variety of races and classes, which leads to a host of different playstyles. If you're a new player, I'll fill you in. The races are Humans, Norn, Silvari, Azura, and the Char. Which race you choose doesn't make you any more powerful, but it does decide the first few chapters of your personal story, and makes a large difference cosmetically, so I would recommend going with whatever one you like the look of the most. All of the races can be matched up with any of the 9 playable classes in Guild Wars 2, so you won't be restricted there. There are three heavy armor classes in Guild Wars 2, and these are the Guardian, the Warrior, and the Revenant. The three medium armor classes are the Ranger, the Engineer, and the Thief. Finally, the three light armor classes are the Elementalist, the Necromancer, and the Mesmer. Each of these classes are completely unique and come with their own pool of skills and specialisations to choose from. If you're a new player, that's plenty to keep you busy, but if you're a returning or experienced player, you need more to sate your burning hunger for content, and that's where elite specialisations come in. Each of the nine classes have two elite specialisations that go with them and can be unlocked at level 80. Elite specialisations significantly change the way a class is played and effectively create a subclass. These elite specs add new weapons, skill types, and sometimes even completely overhaul the base mechanics for a class, creating loads of new playstyles to try out. For those of you that may even have binged your way through all of that content as well, never fear as 2021 brings with it a brand new expansion for Guild Wars 2 that will add a new elite spec for every single class, giving you 9 new subclasses to try out. I'll be going into more detail on the new expansion later in this video, so keep watching. If you want to know more about the classes and elite specs in Guild Wars 2, check out my detailed class guide playlist on my channel, which includes tons of details on all of them for your viewing pleasure. The next thing I want to talk about is the combat system. I've played a fair few MMOs in my time, but none that have combat as immersive as Guild Wars 2. The combat in Guild Wars 2 flows brilliantly, as it allows you to dodge roll and weapon swap in combat, as well as being able to cast the vast majority of spells on the move so you can avoid incoming enemy attacks. The skills in Guild Wars 2 generally work off cooldowns, so you don't have to worry about running out of mana and becoming a useless husk. However, for a more challenging experience, Thieves and Revenants do have finite resources that you have to manage, so bear that in mind if you're thinking of playing as one of them. You have an endurance bar just above your health, which depletes when you dodge roll. This is to stop you from spamming it and becoming invincible, and means that you have to time it well to dodge big attacks and keep yourself in the fight. You will have a limited skill bar of 10 skills in Guild Wars 2, which consists of 5 weapon skills, a healing skill, 3 utility skills, and an elite skill. However, the ability to swap weapons in combat means that you can swap your first five skills for a whole new set with their own cooldowns which gives you more options to crush your enemies. The healing, utility and elite skills can be chosen from a pool based on your class and can be changed whenever out of combat. Each class also has its own unique profession mechanics which often adds extra abilities that sit above your weapon skills and can be activated using your F keys. All of these add up to an enjoyable combat experience that provides enough variety to keep you interested for hours on end. For those avid PvEers among us, Guild Wars 2 offers plenty of story content, with expansions and regular living world updates to keep your appetite fed. The base game for Guild Wars 2 brings you the main personal story, which you follow from level 1 all the way up to level 80. However, the story content doesn't stop there, as ever since the release of Guild Wars 2, ArenaNet has been releasing regular story chapters known as the Living World. At the time of this video, there are three full Living World seasons to play through, and a fourth entitled The Ice Brood Saga, which is scheduled to finish in May of 2021. 
These Living World seasons offer loads of new story content and are actually integral to the main story of Guild Wars 2 instead of being just a distraction between expansions. All of these Living World seasons are sandwiched between two full expansion packs called Heart of Thorns and Path of Fire which also bring with them a full storyline to experience as well as a ton of other content. For those that love to play the story, 2021 brings glad tidings because not only will we see the finale of the Ice Brood Saga, but we'll also be getting a brand new expansion with a whole new story to sink your teeth into. Guild Wars 2 has something for everyone and boasts loads of content for lovers of PvE and PvP alike. If you're into PvE, you've got the story and tons of exploration to do, as well as crafting and trading to keep you interested. There's also plenty of group based PvE content like dungeons and world bosses which offer a chance to work together with friends and guildmates. For our more advanced PvE players we have the recently added large scale raids and we also have Fractals of the Mists which are a large collection of dungeons that increase significantly with difficulty the further you decide to delve. For those of us that love to enjoy the taste of another player's tears as you crush them beneath your feet you won't be disappointed either, as Guild Wars 2 has a ton of PvP content for both amateurs and pros. The two main types of PvP in Guild Wars 2 are Structured PvP and World PvP. Structured PvP is your classic arena combat with teams of up to 5. This mainly consists of Conquest mode, where you and your team need to capture points from enemies and hold them to win, or Team Deathmatch, where you need to work together to rack up enough kills on the enemy team without dying too many times to win the match. Structured PvP can be played in both ranked and unranked mode, with the latter being for less experienced players. And there are tournaments that are regularly run for extended periods of time so people can rise through the ranks and set themselves apart from the rest, earning bragging rights and tons of cool rewards. World PvP is a large scale war between three servers that is based around capturing areas on a large map and holding them to earn points for your team. Your team will earn points for the more captured outposts and larger outposts give more points. For example a keep will give significantly more points than a lumber mill but will also be a hell of a lot harder to capture. You cannot overestimate how much fun you can have travelling across the map with a large group of players taking every outpost along the route and destroying all players that get in your way. However, even travelling in smaller groups and taking out supply caravans and small outposts is a lot of fun and helps contribute to your server's eventual victory. In 2021, we can hopefully expect to see new content that will expand all of these game types and make the game even more enjoyable for people of all proclivities. The main thing that we all have to look forward to in 2021 is the release of Guild Wars 2's third expansion pack, End of Dragons. This is expected to be released in the second half of 2021 and will take us to a whole new continent called Kantha. Kantha was featured in Guild Wars 1 factions but as over 250 years have passed since then you can expect that a lot has changed. As well as the cool new Asian inspired areas it appears it will also be getting 9 new elite specialisations in End of Dragons one for each of the playable classes. This is going to add loads of new playstyles to the game and therefore tons more builds to create and new ways to smite your foes. We'll also be getting a brand new part of the Guild Wars 2 story which will presumably pick up from the finale of the Ice Brood Saga which is due out in May 2021. Not much more info has yet been released about the expansion and ArenaNet are remaining pretty tight lipped on the whole thing so we'll need to wait and see what info they release over the coming months. For a roundup of all the latest news on the new expansion and speculation on what could be to come, check out the video on my channel where I go into detail about what we will and might see in End of Dragons. One of the most satisfying things about Guild Wars 2 for new and experienced players alike is the many different ways that you can progress through the game. You have your basic levelling system which takes you from level 1 to 80 and this is achieved by gaining experience points. This sounds pretty standard so far. But one of the great things about leveling in Guild Wars 2 is that you get experience from almost anything. Killing enemies and doing quests still gives you XP as you'd expect, but if that isn't your main focus, you can level at a respectable pace by just exploring the world, unlocking waypoints and vistas and even get XP from gathering like mining and cutting trees. It's actually possible in Guild Wars 2 to level from 1 to 80 just through crafting and to never even kill an enemy. 
I have no idea why you'd want to do that and it would cost a lot of gold, but what's important here is that it's possible. Once you reach level 80, you may think it's all over, but you'd be wrong. Once you reach level 80, you'll unlock the mastery system, which allows you to continue earning XP and to put it towards unlocking account-wide masteries that help buff your gliding and mounts to traverse difficult terrain, as well as helping you in other ways. We can also expect to see new masteries in 2021 when the expansion launches, so that's something else to look forward to. If PvP is more your style, you're in luck. Guild Wars 2 has a separate progression system for both structured and world PvP, meaning that time you spend participating in those activities will actually help you progress in those specific areas. Structured PvP has its own levelling system, which allows you to choose a reward track that you like the look of and work towards it to achieve really awesome cosmetics and gear. World PvP has a system that gives you points to spend on World PvP specific buffs that do things like give you more damage against gates and guards and all sorts of things like that. All of this means that whatever part of Guild Wars 2 you enjoy playing, you'll always feel like you're working towards something and never wasting your time. Since the inception of Guild Wars 2, ArenaNet have been adamant that it would not be a pay to win game, and for the most part they've stuck to that promise. Guild Wars 2 does not require a monthly subscription to play, and they've recently gone one step further and made the base game completely free to play. With a free account, you'll not be able to access any of the content from the expansions, and there are some restrictions, especially when it comes to high level content, but there's still plenty of content available to those with a free account. If you have a free account and decide that this is the game for you, upgrading to a full account with all of the current expansions is actually very affordable. At the time of this video, you can buy both expansions together for a total price of £25.99, which is an extremely good price considering you'll not have to pay another penny for as long as you play it. For those of you that are willing to invest a little more of your hard earned cash into the game, you have the Gem Store. The gem store mainly consists of cosmetic items like outfits and mount skins, but there are also some really useful account upgrades in there like new character slots and bank tabs. Nothing from the gem store is actually needed and it won't give you a power advantage over other players, but there are a lot of so called quality of life items that can really make things a lot easier. For example, you can get an everlasting gathering tool which allows you to harvest the highest level of ores and woods without ever having to buy new ones or XP boosters that mean you'll be able to level that a little bit faster. So if you're looking for value for money out of an MMO, the game for you in 2021 is Guild Wars 2. One of the most important things about any MMO is the community, and in my experience Guild Wars 2 has one of the best. Wherever you are in the game, you can always see players helping each other out and giving advice over map chat, or helping to explain the mechanics in dungeons without getting too pissy. I believe that one of the main reasons for this is that the game actually rewards you for helping each other out. For example, if you see another player fighting an enemy and you go over and you help kill that enemy, you'll both get the full amount of XP and loot from killing them, so there's no kill stealing or loot stealing which I suppose stops a lot of arguments before they even begin. In Guild Wars 2, you even get XP from reviving another player, which means that if you're lying there dying, cold and alone, a wandering adventurer is much more likely to stop and revive you as there is something in it for them too. No community is perfect because it's made up of people from the real world, and let's be honest, a lot of people really suck. And yes, some of these people play Guild Wars too, but for the most part, I think this game does a really good job of rewarding people for working together and helping each other out, which leads to a more enjoyable experience for everyone. If you need any further proof that Guild Wars 2 is a game worth playing in 2021, Take me as an example. I've been playing Guild Wars 2 since it was in beta, which is over 8 years ago, and here I am, making videos about a game I still very much love and enjoy, and to be honest, still have a lot that I want to do on. So if you're sitting around on January 1st with nothing to do, as Covid's ruined your New Year's plans, why not pick up Guild Wars 2, either a free account if you're a new player, or do forgot your password on your old account if you've played before, and make it your game for 2021. Thank you very much for watching guys and I hope it's been helpful to you. I'm bringing out plenty of Guild Wars 2 content at the moment, so like and subscribe to be kept up to date and most importantly, have a Merry Christmas and a very Happy New Year.